Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. Today we have a range of Star Wars news and we begin by returning to the Rey movie. Last week I put out an update where I covered some wild rumours that appeared on Reddit. These included a supposed title as well as some plot details. Now given the film hasn't even finished writing, it's very unlikely any of this was going to be true and I did reinstate to take these with a pinch of salt. Well today we have another update, one which is far more substantial, one which has more weight to it. So according to this report, Stephen Knight, who is the new writer who's going to pen the script, was originally supposed to turn in his first draft in May 2023, a month after Star Wars Celebration, where the movie was first announced. Due to the WJ strike at the time, this never happened, but now it's suggested Knight is going to submit his first draft between late October and Thanksgiving of this year, allowing Lucasfilm time to read it and give notes before the end of 2023. This is pretty significant. I'm recording this video on Monday 30th of October, and according to this report, the script would be more or less done, or in the very final stages of him touching things up. Just for the first draft though, but the legs of the story, the gist of it, are close to formation. Damon Lindelof was the original writer of this film, but Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm didn't like his ideas. I have a lot more faith in Stephen Knight. Given his track record, looking at the stuff he's written and worked on, he can bring a certain maturity and depth, which I hope is complemented by Charmino B. Chinois directing style. Now recently, Sean Levy opened up about his Star Wars film, which is not as close to being in production like this one is and he surprised everyone in the fandom by stating that Kathleen Kennedy gave him a lot of creative freedom. Are they finally learning? Are they going to allow writers going forward to put more of themselves in their works, to express their art and vision as they see it, without corporate tampering? In addition, while there have been reports stating this film is going to be titled The New Jedi Order, there is apparently no movie title at this stage. I'm sure they have a range of ideas floating round, including what I mentioned the other day, a new beginning. But there is nothing concrete, it's way too early for that, and the title that was going round could simply be the working title. But I will keep you updated if this changes, if we do get some more rumours about shortlist contenders or anything of the sorts. Another piece of news that's come out from this film is that it's going to be the first to release. That is what is believed, not confirmed, but what we suspect. It was originally going to be December 2025, but as we know it's been pushed back to May of 2026. The continuation of the sequel trilogy, and word on the street is this is not going to be a one-off. This is not going to be a standalone, but the first of a new trilogy, all but in name, episodes 10, 11 and 12. Having said this, if you look around fandom spaces, especially online, you notice there is not too much excitement for the prospect of a new film about Rey and her new Jedi Academy. I think fans are way more interested in either what Dave Filoni is doing with Thrawn and Ahsoka, or what James Mangold's promising with a movie about the first ever Jedi. So I'll be interested to see how this movie is received, and by then it would have been seven years since the last cinematic Star Wars venture, since the last time they saw Rey in 2019's Rise of Skywalker. What do you guys think? What are your predictions? How do you think it's going to go down? And is this a movie the Star Wars fandom both wants and needs? And just while we're on the subject, Daisy Ridley returns to the big screen in just a couple of days time in an upcoming psychological thriller, The Marsh King's Daughter. And she's not the only Star Wars actor who features in this movie. Ben Mendelsohn, director Krennic himself, plays a character called Jacob Holbrook. I'm kind of excited for this and I'll probably go see it. But when it comes to her role in Star Wars as Rey, I think Daisy really deserves a much better written script. And for me, the new Star Wars movie featuring Rey's Jedi Academy is a second chance to do her character right. So now let's move on to our next bit of Star Wars news. This one has potentially big implications on the live action content, although it's not intrinsically linked. So allow me to set the scene. With Ahsoka's first season being well and truly behind us, excitement is ramping up in the fandom for what Filoni and of course Favreau are going to do with this story and the characters in the future, especially in Dave Filoni's film, which rumours say is going to be a loose adaptation of Heir to the Empire. And with that in mind, we may have just gotten a big clue that Disney is starting to lean more into Zahn's expanded universe work and embracing it and acknowledging that fans love those stories, love those characters and want to see them adapted for the shows and films. Bringing Grand Admiral Thrawn into Star Wars Rebels was a start and now he's in Ahsoka as well, but there is one character fans keep insisting they want to see and that is Mara Jade. 
Now, over the years, they have given us some expanded universe toys. Hasbro's The Black Series has given us a few of them. We've also had a re-release of many expanded universe works, so it's not as if they've ignored it flat out. However, they have always drawn a very strong line between what is Legends and Canon, and those two don't cross. It's as if the visual media and the literature side are treated as separate franchises, but with the Grand Admiral in Rebels and Ahsoka, and of course the reintroduction of Wayland and Maltantis in The Bad Batch, fans were starting to see a shift. They've started putting occasional easter eggs and plot tropes into some of that content. And with that in mind, this past weekend at MCM Comic Con, Hasbro announced an action figure set like no other, one that is based on the Heir to the Empire trilogy, with figures from the famous showdown between Luke, Le Ook, Luke with two U's, the evil clone, Mara Jade, and Jorah Sabaoth. Now granted, this is not the first time we've had Heir to the Empire figures, there was a Luke one, there was a Thrawn one, but a set like this one is a pretty novel thing, not to mention Sabaoth and the Luke clone. That's pretty awesome. I mean, financially speaking, they probably just did a copy and paste of the Luke mold, slapped on some different clothing and a different coloured lightsaber. I had a theory during Ahsoka Season 1 that Thrawn was going to utilise cloning in some way. Mount Tantis being introduced earlier in the timeline in The Bad Batch could be something by this stage he's got complete control over. I wouldn't discount this for Dave's film. Could he have Ahsoka face a clone of herself? If they're loosely adapting her to the Empire tropes, Ahsoka is kind of the Luke Skywalker of this story. I don't know, I'm really hyped for this. It's no coincidence they're releasing this amidst the buzz for Ahsoka, and also during a time where rumours are rampant that Dave Filoni is adapting this trilogy into his film. So I would say this is pretty big news, and for the first time in a long time, I'm actually excited to buy this set of figures. I do collect, but my personal favourite lines are the ones during the Lucas era, so the prequel trilogy, Power of the Force, the Saga collection, and so on and so forth. I don't usually buy Disney Star Wars figures. Maybe a couple of Funkos, but that's a different story. But what do you guys think? Could this mean anything? Is it just another run of Legends figures, as they've done before, or is this directly connected to the fact that we might see Mara Jade come into canon in Dave's movie? Other figures announced were a Black Series Paz Fisla, Mace Windu alongside a 187th Legion clone, a vintage collection Cassian Andor, a first generation clone, Force Awakens Finn, and Count Dooku from Attack of the Clones. And from Hot Toys, they showed off a new Grand Admiral Thrawn figure with pretty remarkable detail in the face. But that's Hot Toys for you. And so finally, my dear friends, on this sag after strike side of things, negotiations are quote, in the final stretch and a deal looks close, but no deal was made over the weekend. Deadlines say quote, both parties will be working independently Monday and re-engage on scheduling at the end of the day. So I would say a big update is close. So with that said, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of today's Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.